In 2024, 1,500 windsurfers will compete at the Defi Wind. The Defi Wind is the longest and hardest windsurf cup on earth, with one single race being almost 40 kilometers long. My goal is to enter the top 100 in the fin category, and I will take you along on this journey on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to stay tuned. Hey guys, I hope you're doing good. I'm just coming off the lake pretty much from a quick DEFI training and I thought I'd make a video on how I prepare for the DEFI Cup. For me, it's now pretty much two weeks out until uh, the races begin. And for you guys, it's probably around one week until the DEFI starts. And in this video, I will show you the equipment that I will be using at the DEFI. I will start in the fin only category. Then I will show you shortly my uh, little fitness training that I'm doing for the DEFI. Then I'm gonna tell you about the tactics that I will uh, try to make use of. And of course, I will also show you uh, how I trained windsurfing for the DEFI wind race, which is actually the most important part. So guys, behind me, I uh, yeah, prepared pretty much all the equipment that I'm gonna take to the Defi Wind. And I would say we start straight away with the two boards that I will bring. Yeah, this is the, the all round one. This is when the, the wind won't be super strong. Uh, my 107 liters medium board. And this board I will use with, with sails, yeah, 7.0, 7.7, 7, maybe 6.0, but 6.0 I didn't try yet on this board. Yeah, I used it a lot with 7.0 on Sardinia. I'm gonna show you a few pictures and it was really amazing. For this board, I actually bought myself a new fin. This is a 36 centimeters carpenter fin. Unfortunately, I lost my last one, it broke. And then we come to the next board. This is a little bit more tricky. Um, I got two fins for this board. This is a 29 centimeter Z fin, SLM S minus. I borrowed this one from Niels, thanks for that. And then I got a 32 centimeter Z fin here, also SLM S minus. And this fin I will yeah, use when the Tramontana gets really, really strong, when we will have 40 knots on the course. Yeah, very, very easy uh, to sail. And it goes also very nicely on crosswind courses like the Defi wind. Um, I got the, the 7.0 rigged. This is the sail that I used today. And this, I would almost say, it's my favorite sail of the range. Very easy to handle, rotates almost on its own. One of the really special things is the boom, actually. I think this is one of the secret weapons that I'm gonna bring to the Defi. You might be thinking, what is so special about this boom? I don't want it to sound like an advertisement, although it is to some degree, but it's a new size um, that 0.7 has. I, I, I use this boom now for almost all my sails. So 5, 4, 6, 0, 7, 0. I use this boom for also for almost all my foil sails. It's 160 to 210. And so this is basically a hybrid in between a wave boom and the slalom boom. So the tail is a little bit wider, front is a little bit wider, so you can use it with slalom sails, but it's still extremely light and thin. We will also go to the surf shop in just a moment and I will take you along for a short, you know, shopping session. I have these two sails, five, four. Yeah, so this sail, as you can see, it's a little bit too new for my taste when you go for a competition. But uh, yeah, unlike last year, this year I'm a lot more used to the feeling and the power of the 0.7 sail, what stance you need, the tuning and so on. The, the second option, this is the 6.0. Aside from this stuff, what I'm gonna bring. These two harnesses, with all honesty, I haven't decided yet which one I'm gonna use. This is the Liberty harness, it's a hybrid harness and it's really good to avoid back pain, but it's a little bit more difficult also to twist your upper body. Uh, which you tend to do a lot, especially in extremely high wind slalom sailing. This is a waist harness from 0.7. It's simply very comfortable. And I think when the wind gets, gets very, very strong, this will be my harness. And if it's super light wind, this will be my harness. And this is the equipment which, with which I will try to get into the top 100 of the fin category. It's gonna be quite a challenge. Last year, I uh, didn't manage. Uh, yeah, so see you in the shop. Bye bye. <music> Guys, we are now at the surf shop and I prepared a little list with things that I might need, probably need at the Defi Wind. And we'll now go in. Oh, there is a, a very small dog. <laughs> yeah, nice, this was a very good start to the video. Yeah, so we're now inside our surf shop, the Wind Lounge. 
Of course, this is more or less staged, but I yeah, want to give you the full experience. Staged, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see each other since uh, one minute. Yes. Nice to see you again. Uh, welcome to the uh, construction site, I, I'd say. Yeah, the, the shop is not finished, but I think since the last time you saw the shop, a lot has happened. But that's not the, the topic today. I brought a list that you've never heard of before. Oh. Oh. So I would like to drive down to the Defi Wind and I need some spare parts and accessories. So let me guess. Such as an equipment bag. <laughs> <laughs> you will get this one. Oh, this is too big. Can I have a small unifiber? Yes, you can have a small unifiber one. Yeah. This is the bag. It has space. I need something to repair my sails in case of utter damage so that could occur on the race course. Some tapes. Yes. There's different kinds of stuff. I need a simple one. Simple to use, not so complicated. Then this this looks complicated. This. Then you get some uh, ripstop tape. Where is it? It's in the front, I think. So we went here for no reason. We went here for this. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> Um, a pleasure in that corner. Now I'm sweating for okay. the viewers out there. In, in case you're new to this channel, this actually is our surf shop. <laughs> mm. Well, just one is enough. I don't want to that's the, make okay. us go bankrupt. I think that Ooh. should be... Black for black sails. That's yes. perfect. Next thing, board repair. In case I crash at the, the jibe. Then you get epoxy. Yeah, something simple. Okay. This. This looks sad. Yeah. We go, how much is this in the shop? Eight euros. Okay. Fair enough. 80, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next thing is... Do you need a new mass base? No. Just... A tendon. 0.7 mass base tendon. I have a tendency to not change these things. Then... And wait until <laughs> either it rips and I get into a bad situation. Then you could also take Or I a simply new take one. a new yeah. base. No, I don't want to take a new base. Okay. This is... Dyneema. Dyneema. Just two times two meters I need. Okay. And guys, since we are fully into the advertisement, this is how we cut our ropes when we sell them. Oh, lovely. Mm. I see, Mr. Christopher, you are a man of great service. It was a pleasure to acquire this piece of Dyneema rope. One pair of new harness lines. We have all this stuff. I would love to act as if I had a choice, but I'm sponsored by 0.7. So you don't have so a choice. So I would absolutely love to take a 0.7 arms <laughs> line. 2834. Looks like no problem. You're welcome. One Perfect. or two? No, one is enough. Okay. But actually, guys, these are sort of the best. Outhaul trim system. You're welcome. Um, I'm taking this simple one because my boom is almost a wave boom, and I'm not sure if we can make our normal trim system fit. We could, but we don't have time. But this is too complicated. Yeah. But normally I would recommend another outhaul trim system. Next up is sunscreen. Yes, important, because who never uses it? Me. Then this is for you. So here we go. Helmet. Then helmet. Which size? The biggest one. I have a very big head. Yes. With a very... Long neck. Big <coughs> brain. <laughs> <laughs> this would be one of those. Thank you. And they are the whip helmets are the lightest helmets on the market, so everybody uses them. Yes. So I need an impact vest. Which size? Big, big bicep, big chest muscles. Then this you is how I am. Get an XL. <laughs> this looks big. Should I try it on? Nice, it's red. So if I'm bleeding a lot. You don't see it. Yeah. You don't see it. I really want to emphasize again, this is a construction site. We're not finished. I think in four weeks, the shop is ready. Maybe when you'll be back from France. Hello. Guys, it's fitness time. I'm here with my girlfriend Anna and we are taking a quick walk through the woods. Yeah, this is pretty much 80% of my fitness preparation. Just doing some cardio, getting the leg muscles moving. So I'm at least somewhat fit, but my main goal is to stay healthy and for me it's usually that when I do too much fitness and I stress myself over these things I simply get sick and at the Defi win there are really two very important things regarding fitness first is your cardio fitness it needs to be at least okay and then there are your leg muscles 
and especially when you're racing on the slalom equipment it gets extremely painful so you need to do at least a little bit of fitness guys as you can see we are walking along my home spot Lake Kospun. There's even a little bit of wind, but I was foiling earlier today. So, uh, yeah, let's keep on going. So guys, we are done with running. Very, very easy run, but still feels really, really nice. And every evening addition to the running, I stretch myself for 15 minutes. And I really hope that this will be at least sort of sufficient to complete the Defi wind races in a good position. And I would say now we go to the next chapter, the windsurf training. As you can see, the setting is a little bit different. I'm in France now and yeah, I already had a few nice warm-up runs here together with the boss of Point 0.7, Andrea Kuki. But you are gonna see the final preparations here in the area in the next video. So subscribe to this YouTube channel to not miss that. And now I want to give you an idea of the windsurf preparation that I did beforehand. So basically, as you all know by now, the Defi Wind is the longest long distance race on planet Earth. And windsurfing is a very specific movement. The most important thing is that you get on the water and that you're training basically fin windsurfing if you want to complete a defi in the fin category. And yeah, my training, it wasn't really training, basically started on Sardinia um, earlier this year. Probably most of you guys saw the videos. We had plenty of fun there and we were sailing almost every day on the fin so that was very nice we didn't have so many super strong wind days but it was still nice because you can really feel that when you're windsurfing almost every day for one week that your body is getting used to it and you feel more uh, windsurf fit i would call it it's like this this fitness that you only get when you're windsurfing when your forearms aren't getting sore anymore after you know one or two hours of sailing when you're not laying in bed at night after three hours of sailing and you're like Ugh, i can't move anymore and then unfortunately i went back to germany and that was quite cold still and you know we have lakes with gusty wind so i was foiling a lot i'm also going to so show you some pictures of that um, it was quite okay-ish regarding the preparation i think because uh you know i got my new patrick foil so i was you know actually on purpose trying to foil on the edge and that is also exhausting but yeah the physical capabilities that you need while foiling are a lot smaller than compared to normal windsurfing so yeah i'm quite sure that i lost a lot of the fitness that i gained in sardinia when I went back to Germany and now I'm in the south of France and I'm trying to get a little bit of that fitness back again. And then again, I also need to get my tuning and my trim. And then I also, you know, need to trim and tune for the long crosswind course, because this is actually what a lot of people, including myself last year, underestimate. Uh, it's that you're like, for half of the course, you're basically sailing upwind. And when your trim is not good for upwind sailing, and when you're not fit enough, you know, to um, rotate your upper body for like half an hour or so uh, with uh, sail pulling and yeah so my recommendation is absolutely to just get on the water and windsurf as much as you can especially if you're completing the defi wind on slalom equipment because this takes i would say three four times as much energy as when you try it on the free wave equipment and the tactics are so important when you want to yeah, even get close to the top 100 because it starts basically at the starting line. It's a rabbit start um, with the boat and you saw the pictures. And this starting line is the longest starting line, I think in all of windsurfing worldwide. And it makes a huge difference whether you start all the way on the outside or on the inside. If you're starting on the outside, um, the boat is coming first to you. So you're starting first and you get free wind, but you need to have the speed because if you don't have the speed, then the people on the inside are gonna overtake you and take away your wind and you are gonna basically, you, know, you, you could get stuck and it could end up in a disaster. So um, yeah, where you start plays a huge role. I don't think I can sail upwind fast enough to start all the way down at the pin end. So I will start further upwind. This is the first piece of tactics that I'm going to apply basically during the races. The next thing is that I will do a, a test race of the Defi Wind course. You're also going to see that in one of my next videos. And I want to exactly know where to place my harness lines 
um, because <laughs> this sounds so simple, but you know, the course is changing. So you kind of, you know, need to find the optimal uh, way of doing that. And then I also will, before the event, sail the course and try to get a feeling of how well I'm doing on the upwind course this year. Depending on how I feel going upwind, I will decide how I complete the race because there are different ways, you know, you can go straight to the buoy. Basically, this is what the foilers are doing or you are sailing upwind, then you're sailing under the beach, which is absolutely fantastic. You're like going for five to seven kilometers in a straight line, straight next to the beach and offshore winds. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, you have to go upwind quite steep first before you get rolled by all the other people, as I just told you, and then you go downwind in the end. And this is, yes, it, it kind of depends. It depends a lot on your sailing skills. Then I'm gonna bring bananas, I'm gonna bring uh, yeah, plenty of water. I'm gonna be a little bit better prepared than last year. And this is, with all honesty, all the tactics that I'm gonna come with. Of course, my equipment is, uh, yes, pretty much on point, which is a huge helper. And yeah, it would be interesting for me to know uh, what your preparation is. You can write me down in the comments. I guess a lot of you guys will also be at the DEF event. I already met so many of you. And with this being said, I would say we meet in the next video here from the south of France. I hope to yeah, do like two, three more videos from here. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel to not miss any of the future videos. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. As always, it takes a lot of effort to create this content. And if you need anything windsurf related, you can check out our online windsurf shop. The Wind Lounge, as you saw in this video, it's linked down in the video description. And I would say we see each other the next time.